Happy Sunday! I am the supplier, and this is my Sunday book stack for the week of March 24th, 2013. <laughs> So, we are in the middle of testing right now, and if you haven't seen the uh, stop-motion, Lego stop-motion animations that my students did during homeroom last week, check them out. They're pretty cool. I am really excited and proud of the amount of focus that these gentlemen put into the work that they did. I'm... It's one of those times where I have so much pride as a teacher in the work that was created that I just don't have words to express that pride, and I just want to share it with everybody. So go check it out. I put links in the description to their, uh, their stop motion videos if you haven't seen them already. So I said I was going to read three books last week, and then on Friday I got a bunch of books in my mailbox, not a bunch, three. I got three books in my mailbox that I was really excited about, and yesterday I went ahead and read one since I had finished my three that I had said I was going to read for the week, and it was Ten by Gretchen McNeil. And Ten is one of those books that is... Um, it fits, it fits nice and neatly into, like, the scary horror, like, genre. It recognizes the, the tropes of the genre, and, and yet they still, the characters, still fall into these tropes. I was, however, surprised at the end, and, you know, the, the way the story was told still gave me a reasonable amount of anxiety, which was what I was going for. So I'm going to have to add this to the scary book collection for my students who like scary books. Also in my mailbox, I got The Runaway King by Jennifer Nielsen. This is uh, the sequel to The False Prince. As is my custom, I have to go back and reread The False Prince before I can read The Runaway King. So um, this book is not actually in my stack this week, but it was one of the other ones in my mailbox. The third book that I got in my mailbox on Friday was a Ripper. And I think I found this one... I don't know, I'm gonna guess because of Name of the Star. So I'm about three chapters in, and there's already a big reveal, and I was like, huh, that's kind of awesome. So I'm reading this this week. I am also reading Isle of Blood, which is the third book in the Monstromologist series. Um, I've had this one sitting on my desk for a while, and it's a library book, so I thought I really, really needed to get to it and get it read. And, I don't know, I'm about a third of the way through. I started it a couple days ago. Uh, it's interesting, I enjoy it, but I, you know, I, I enjoy the Monstromologist series as, as, I don't know, I guess as a general rule. It's just fun and creepy and there are monsters and, how, how do you go wrong with, with monsters and brilliant writing? The last book in my stack this week is A Box Out by John Coy. I think I said I was going to read this a long time ago. And then uh, one of my students finished Crackback and he wanted something else, so I gave him this one. This one is uh, about a basketball team who engages in prayer before games, I think it is. And a, a student who has just been moved up to the varsity team finds this an uncomfortable practice. And I'm, I'm interested to see how it plays out. What I like about what I've read of John Coy is, yes, they're sports books, but they also deal with issues beyond the sports. So, like in Crackback, it was steroids, so in here it's school prayer. And there's enough sports to keep the sports people, like the, the kids who read it because they like sports, interested. And there's also enough issue discussion that would interest people who wouldn't normally read sports books. So I'm excited about this. It should be a fairly quick read, I think. So what books are you guys reading this week? I'd like to hear from you talk about it. Um, Rosie is reading Between Shades of Grey, so if you want to get in on that conversation, I did put up a video uh, talking about how I finished Between Shades of Grey before I was well, before Rosie and I actually talked about it, so go check that out. Leave comments about Between Shades of Grey over there. Um, Rosie might be making a video response, which would be really cool to have, you know, some, like, video back and forth conversation. No pressure, Rosie. Um, I'm going to put up a feature shelf this week. It will be the first part of a historical fiction 
edition of Feature Shelf. When I was creating the list of, of historical fiction books I could put on the Feature Shelf, I was trying to categorize them, and I'm going to start with World War II for a couple of reasons. One, because it is World War II is the period of time in history that my students are most interested in, for whatever reason. Um, and also because I wanted to get Codename Verity and Between Shades of Grey in there, and I'm trying to figure out which book I have to cut to make it five instead of like seven or eight at this point, which is why it's not up yet. So, historical fiction will be multi-part. Um, I'm also going to do one on novels and verse because a lot of the books that I came up with for historical fiction were also not, or yeah, were also novels and verse. So we've got that coming up, and a mystery edition, and the historical fiction and mystery were um, requested by Karen, so yay for requesting feature shelves. Also part of the reason why I bought Ripper was because that fits in both um, historical fiction and mystery categories. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to put it yet, I'm going to really try to only use it once. I think that is it for me today. I'll see you guys later, happy reading, and don't forget to be awesome.